Welcome back to the workshop everyone. My name is Matthew and on today's episode we are going to be welding some panels together finally. So let's get started. So the first step to making two panels one is just making sure that they flow together nicely. And once we've got them flowing we need to then just mark exactly how much overlap we have between the two panels. So I've just taken a permanent marker and I've marked the line where they overlap. So once I know exactly how much material I have to work with I can plan my cut in such a way that I don't end up having to fill any of these Clico holes and that my weld is as straight as possible. The reason we'd want to have a cut line that is as straight as possible is that these panels are currently overlapping one another, meaning that because of the curve, this panel actually ends up being too short. These features here where this edge has been turned and this lip here don't actually currently line up. This top panel is essentially too short at the moment. So now if we were to go and mark a curve and cut on that curve, they'd be exactly the same curve when they're overlapping. But the second this panel essentially grows and these features line up again, you'd end up with two different curves and you'd have gaps in your fit up. And we really don't want that. The second reason we'd want as straight a line as possible is that if you imagine these two panels are cut exactly straight, if when it comes time to weld, we need to just shift these panels in orientation to one another to get these features to line up. Because they're on a straight line, they can shift without really changing too much. But if we were to have a curve and you needed to shift, you'd actually be rotating the one panel around, changing the whole panel just to get your features to line up. And the last reason you'd want as straight a line as possible is when you cut it, it's never going to be perfectly flat and straight. So if you have a nice straight line that you've cut on, you can just take the flat side of a file and just run it along the edge and remove all the high spots. But if you had a curve, you'd have to sort of have a round file and work inside the curve, making things a lot more difficult. So I'm gonna go set you guys up on time-lapse while I mark out a cut line and start trimming up these panels. <laughs> So after all the trimming and filing, you can see we've got a nice tight fit up. So next step will be to just wipe off this permanent marker, make sure everything is nice and clean, and then we'll weld them together. Okay, so there is the panel tacked together. I've just done these little stitches instead of the tack welds. On the 5000 series, the single tack welds tend to crack. So I just do a couple dabs extra and that holds it together nicely. Next up, I'll be grinding them down on the outside and the same on the inside where there's penetration. And then we'll go over it with a hammer and dolly, make sure it's all nice and smooth. And then weld it all finished.
All right, so there is our weld. Looks pretty neat. And I don't know if you can see in the video, but I just jump around and I do 50 mil sections just to sort of keep the heat and the stress to a minimum. And here is the inside. Got quite nice penetration all along the inside. So next step, we'll grind the weld and start planishing. All right, so there's our weld all cleaned up and finished. Almost just clean over here on the edge. But other than that, that weld is done. Now I'm just going to quickly go over it, just lightly, just to see what it looks like when we polish the weld. See if we can see any of the weld bead or anything like that. All right, so I've moved on to the next panels and I've just tacked it up and ground the tacks back quickly. And I just wanted to mention that after you've tacked your panels, you don't need to planish it back to 100% the right shape, but you do just need to make sure that between your tacks, it is nice and level. As long as it's not really catching your nail, then you are golden. It doesn't need to flow 100% because obviously it is going to pull again when you weld it, and then you're ready to weld. So there we go, we're finished with the welding. Now the next step will be just grinding the welds. So we're just gonna grind the top, just most of the way through these dabs. You don't really wanna be able to see them anymore. You want it nice and flat, but you don't wanna grind all the way till the weld is flush. You wanna leave a little bit of material, at least enough that you can catch a fingernail. And then on the back, we're gonna leave about a millimeter when we're grinding, just a good bit of material. So if we end up with any hollows or anything like that in the weld, we'll have some meat at the back to just push up into the hollow to fill it. So now that we've ground the weld back, now it's time to start stretching it. So we're just gonna get a hammer and dolly and just start working this weld the whole way along, just a little bit to take some of this stress out the panel from where the weld has shrunk. I'm gonna get on that. Okay, so when I work a weld, I just start off by stretching over the whole length of the weld first, because the weld will shrink over its whole length. So I've just gone in and just worked a couple passes over the whole weld. And once I was happy with that, then I go in and I just check how the panel's flowing. So anything that's low, then I'll just work that specific section. If I make any high spots, I just put a sandbag behind the high, just to help support the panel and then just lightly tap the high spot down from the top with a hammer or the slapper and that gets me pretty close. So after I'm happy with that, then I go in and I just grind the weld to pretty much flush. And I've just done that over the whole panel. And after that, I'm gonna go in and do the same on the back, grind it mostly away. I've worked the weld so I won't, need to, I won't need any more material in the weld to stretch up. It's all pretty close now. It's just gonna be a little bit stretchier and a little bit of shrink there, just to work the whole panel and get everything flowing nicely. Alright, so after finishing up with the hammer and dolly, I gave it a quick wheel and then a light 
sand and polish just to see how it's going and it's looking pretty good so I went ahead and then just welded on the reverse off camera and tuned that up so next up we are moving on to this taillight piece at the back here I can't see the end but we'll see it Quick little interjection while I'm busy trimming up this panel is that in the reverse you can actually see hopefully that the material is thinner than just a standard piece of off cut. And if I compare here to the edge where all the shrink is, I don't know if you'll be able to tell but it's actually significantly thicker there on the edge where all the shrink is. I just thought it was quite interesting. Let's get back to trimming. Alright, so after tacking up the panel, I've just gone ahead and ground them down. And I realize I probably haven't explained why exactly I grind down the tacks. And so why I'm doing that is that eventually when I do the final pass over the whole weld, there's going to be no difference in thickness. So like this is 1.5 mil for instance, and then where the weld bead is, it's like 2 mils thick. So if you grind them down, it's all the same thickness. You don't need more or less amps. And then also when it comes to working the weld afterwards, there won't be a difference in thickness between you know on attack and in between attack it should all be the same thickness and it should make working the weld a lot easier dangerous times don't fly too high be sure to keep the ground in sight fly forever if you keep it tight love the world but keep the sky on your mind All right, so with the weld cleaned, the panel clips back in its spot and locates again. Next up, I'm going to be moving on to welding this top panel on. Now, I'm not going to weld this top panel as well as this bottom panel to that side. And the reason being is that at the end of the day, we're going to have to weld this entire back end together. And I need to be able to mark and describe exactly where those welds need to be so that the car is the right width and it's not skew or anything like that. So for that to happen, I need to be able to clip the left side of the car and the right side of the car back on the back. So if I weld the top and the bottom to one side, I won't be able to do that. So at the end of the day, once all the panels for the back half of the car are done, we're going to have three welds to do. We're going to have this top one here, this bottom one here, as well as all the way along the door will be welded to both of the fenders on both sides. And then we're going to also have this scuttle piece that goes between the two sides. Now that's going to have to be welded to one side or the other, and I'm not 100% sure on which side it'll be. The scuttle will probably be welded to 
this side as it doesn't have that top piece and will only have the bottom piece welded to it. So that hopefully will be able to clip on the car and then it'll be three welds and the whole back end of the car will be done. There's still a little bit of highs and lows that it will sort out but for now I am pretty happy with that.